The Detroit Lions are 10 and 4 with a chance to clinch their first NFC North title this upcoming Sunday against the Minnesota Vikings. Third down at 27. Mullins fires. Wow. Jefferson, wow. What a catch. Unbelievable. Second and 10 following the spike. Mullins to the outside. It's Powell. Brandon Powell takes it all the way to the Lions 30 yard line. From the 30 on first down, Mullins steps up. He throws. It is picked off. Malafonwu with the exclamation point. He fought through Malafonwu. This is going to be over. Lions are going to win it. Lions are bringing the NFC North title back to Detroit. After 30 years, the Lions are bringing it back as division champions. your first one we knew this one's gonna be easy you guys came in and earned it and you've earned it all year in week 16 of this 2023 season afatu melifanwu won the nfc player of the week wrapped up five tackles two sacks two passes defended and one interception if he's a big dude he's yeah. like six two six three out there making plays i think the kids are stud because if he's performing at, at like a high level very high level He's six foot two. He ran a four four. He's just, he's one of the best corners that no one talks about. Yeah. Man's been playing lights out. Man's been all over the field. Yeah. Man's talking choppy, eh? This is where it all started. It's people call me Iffy. That's my nickname. I'm from a small town in, in Massachusetts, Grafton. Like half of my family was born in London, and we lived in Framingham for a little bit then moved to Grafton when I was in like the first grade and then lived in Grafton all my life. Family was very important to Afatu. He has three older brothers and a sister. By all of his accounts, they grew up in a very competitive household. And he said they got that from their mother. My mom has uh, sacrificed so much for, for me and my brothers. Um, and just seeing how hard she works inspires me every day. Your brother, your brother Obi got drafted uh, back in 2017 in the second round by the Raiders. Just me being the younger brother, I always want to I always want to beat my older brother. Iffy went to Grafton High School where he played defensive back, wide receiver, and running back. Incredible athlete, you know, in high school, he did a lot of whole lot. You ran, you know, running back, you played wide receiver, defensive back. I think also, if I read correctly, you played basketball, ran track. You know, you did so much in high school as an athlete. He was playing DB, he was playing receiver, he was playing wildcat quarterback. And I'm just like, my gosh, he does everything, everything. Ifatu was regarded as a three-star recruit. I think I think because my brother got recruited, I, I, I started to get more more attention than most guys. Like, and he had offers from Syracuse, Boston, UConn, and Michigan. He said that Boston was a little close to home, so he didn't want to go there. He also didn't want to go to UConn because that's where his brother went, and he didn't want to follow too closely in his brother's footsteps. And for Michigan, well, they were just too late. I got some good offers. I had BC, I had UConn, I had Syracuse. Got Michigan late, five days before signing day. That only left Syracuse. At the end of the day, it was like, I felt more like at home here. Um, and then Syracuse was the best fit. I decided to stick with Syracuse and, um, you know, never looked back. It was probably one of the best decisions of my life. Like, I had my mind set on here. I pictured myself being here, so that's why I stayed here. Ify was redshirted his freshman year. Redshirted 2017. Yeah, I think it helped a lot. That's something I wanted to do right off the bat. Redshirt, you know, get bigger, uh, kind of learn the playbook system. So, like, I'll be ready to come, come spring. It takes him a bit to start. He doesn't start as a freshman. He's redshirted. One of his highlights was Syracuse was in the 2018 season when they played against North Carolina. He got his first real playing time, where he had four pass breakups.
tackle and a loss of five. DeVito to the end zone, touchdown! Ravian Pierce, the winning points in double overtime for the Orange. Syracuse beat North Carolina in overtime with a score of 40 to 37. If you really had a breakout game this past week against UNC and Chris Frederick's been so good this year, then he goes down with the ankle. What's that like knowing that you probably had to go out there and roll with that spot the rest of the game? Uh, at first, when I was first, I was out there for a couple series and I'm just thinking like, oh, he's gonna come back. Like he's gonna come out of the tent and he's gonna sub me in. Worked out too, you had four pass breakups. So they came at you a lot and you, you had the most at Syracuse more than a decade. His first start was in the 2019 season against Liberty. My first start was 2019 versus Liberty, and I, I was just real nervous. Uh, you know, my first start in college, um, you know, going in fall camp, I was just, I was just, you know, anxious for my to get my first interception. Ended up getting my first interception in my first game, which kind of settled me in and relaxed me for I feel like and like propelled me throughout the rest of the season. So. You know, that was definitely a good experience. Most started 2019 and then had a good year, started again 2020 and had a real good year. So, so I mean, you guys had a talented secondary there. Yeah, I, I definitely love playing with those guys. Um, they're like probably my closest friends on the team. Uh, coach Coach Babers is, is definitely a good coach. Um, the presence he has in his locker room, I think everyone's probably seen the, the after win um, locker room speeches with they were so like after wins, he's definitely a fiery guy. Syracuse's 2020 season was a tough one. They had a record of one in 10, but 2020 was strange for everyone. And Syracuse only played ACC teams. So we didn't reach our team goals this year, you know, bowl game and, you know, just a winning record in general. And we didn't have either of those. So yeah, we definitely didn't reach our goal with that. Expectations for the going into the year was just, you know, play like it's my last year, just so uh, I wouldn't have any regrets afterwards. Going into the season, my mindset was, you know, I'm going to play like this is my last year, and then at the end of the year, I'm going to see, like, basically see what's up. Well, I feel like I've been I've been blessed with good coaches that, you know, helped us with man and zone, and I've had two different DCs. I've had three different. Um, Owners, coaches, so I feel like they've all brought different aspects to help me be a more like complete player. Um, so I actually majored in economics. It was you were a three-time honor roll selection by the ACC? I was all ACC academic about two or three times. I forget how many times. I feel like for me, I've always been a I've always been a good student. My mom's always pushed me to be do well in school because you know football is not going to last forever. So. He finished at Syracuse with 88 tackles, three interceptions, and one sack. But I made I made second team second team All ACC from the AP poll, and then I made third team All ACC coaches poll. So I was I and mean, I was happy with that. He decided to forego his senior year and declare for the NFL draft. And Syracuse has prepared me well for this moment. Scheme wise, I feel like I can fit into any scheme. I see myself coming in as a corner um, with the ability to play safety. Um, obviously, I have no problem playing safety. If any team moves me there, I'll be happy to play there. And I can really fit anywhere, but I, like, I'm comfortable playing zone. I'm comfortable playing man. It doesn't matter to me. We're going to see a big, long corner that you know can run with anybody. Um, good ball skills and, and uh, good man coverage and physical. So I feel like the size is just an added plus. It's not like a, it's not a negative. You know, if I go to a team that's rebuilding, then I would like to, you know, make an impact. I just try to just go into it with an open mind and don't, and not, I'm not set on like, oh, I talked to this team the most, they're going to pick me. And so I kind of just, you know, wait, just sit back and wait and um, enjoy it. And then whenever that phone rings, I'll be happy with whoever it is. The Detroit Lions select Ifatu Melifonwu.
What are we? What makes us what we are? And what we're gonna be? I think it's that right there. It's grit. It's what we started with last year, guys. All you guys that were in here. It's our core foundation, man, grit. And what does it mean? Really, in a nutshell, I think it means this. We'll go a little bit longer, we'll push a little harder, and we'll think a little deeper and a little sharper. Now, before the draft, Ify was asked a lot about his brother's involvement in the drafting process. And he always gave the same response. Yeah, so the main things he's basically told me is, um, you know, this is like a, it's a stressful process right now, but try to do your best to enjoy it because you don't, you don't get it back. Um, it's a once in a lifetime thing. Um, and, and, you know, just don't take anything for granted. So don't take anything for granted because it could be gone just like that. You know, and don't take anything for granted because it could be taken away from you just like that. The main lesson that he learned was to not take things for granted and to be thankful for what you have. Say thank you for grace. Thank you for mercy. Thank you for understanding. Thank you for wisdom. Thank you for parents. Thank you for love. Thank you for kindness. Thank you for humility. Thank you for peace. Thank you for prosperity. Say thank you in advance for what's already yours. True desire in the heart for anything good is God's proof to you sent beforehand to indicate that it's yours already. And that seemed to be great advice because Ify suffered multiple injuries during his tenure with the Lions. It was just, it was a, just a strain, a strain in my quad. Your first two seasons were plagued with injuries. You... And I felt I was playing well until, until that play where I got injured and then having to be out for like about 10, 11 weeks. He played very well in that first half, and I think he wind up going down in the second half with a hamstring injury. You know, it's tough being a rookie and, and missing a majority of the season, so. Aaron Glenn was not going to give up on Iffy. He's still believing in you, which he has made it known. He has not ever wavered in his belief in you. Melifon Wu might spend some time at safety this year. I guess my role is wherever they want to put me because I feel like I just have a, like a unique body type to be able to play multiple positions. He switched from cornerback to safety. Him and defensive coordinator Aaron Glenn has talked about. Aaron said he always envisioned Ify Melifonwu as kind of like that Swiss Army Knife player. He's big, he's fast, he can run, he's learning how to use his body as a safety. Remember, he played corner coming, you know, that was what he was drafted as. He's played in all 15 games this year, but most of the time he's been on special teams. And due to the defensive backs struggling a little bit this year for the Lions, Ifatu got his opportunity. And then after a struggling Tracy Walker, he's inserted into the lineup. He made his presence known against the Broncos. I always had that thought in my head that it, it's, it, it's right there. You never know what could happen. If Atu Melifan, who has officially arrived in the NFL, am. I mean, I just, I feel like I just got an opportunity and I just got more comfortable at the position. And thank God I'm healthy, like I said before. And I just got the opportunity to be on the field. He's played like one of the, the better safeties in the NFL. But Melifon, I mean, has been a breath of fresh air. Honestly, I'm getting used to it, but I, I just, I like, I just like playing football, so. And if he can continue to stack good weeks like this, you're, it's just gonna, it's another building block moving forward. And after that was week 16. True desire in the heart for anything good is God's proof to you sent beforehand to indicate that it's yours already.